Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. Uh, so guys, um, there's a question that was asked on the live stream. Uh, a question that I wanted, I wanted to talk a little bit about. Demetrius Andrade. Is he being ducked by Jamal Charlo and Gennady Golovkin? Uh, Demetrius Andrade is somebody that people have mixed opinions about. He has his supporters that think he, you know, he's the next next coming of Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, and there's also the detractors that say D Demetrius Andrade's resume is trash. Demetrius Andrade fights nobody. Demetrius Andrade, you know, is a hype job. Um, where do I stand on where Demetrius Andrade is? I think Demetrius Andrade is a quality fighter. But Demetrius Andrade, unfortunately, hasn't been getting the breakout fights. He's a fighter who is seems to be high risk, low reward. Where, where other fighters view him as high risk, but not much to gain. He hasn't got a huge profile. Unfortunately, this is something that is common with a lot of the American fighters. You know, Crawford is the same. Uh, there's many fighters in America that suffer the same. You know, there's Jaron Boots Ennis, who's an up and coming prospect. He's in a champion like Andrade, but he's also a really, really hot prospect. But actually, nobody knows him. If you look at Conor Ben, for example, who's not as good as Jaron Ennis, he's got a bigger profile. Yes, it helps when his dad was who he was, but nevertheless, I don't think he's being pushed enough. Virgil Ortiz, he's definitely out there a little more. Uh, but some of the fighters like Andrade, like Jaron Boots Ennis, they just have got no profile. Which means that they're high risk, low reward. The top guys don't really want to fight them because they know they're good. And there's not a lot to gain. What I mean is that gain financially. Like Most of these guys at the top are world champions. And that, that's why I, I get a little frustrated. Because the guys at the top that are holding belts, they probably look at Andre and think, we don't really need him. He's too dangerous. He's risky. But the whole point is for a champion to fight another champion to look to become undisputed that should be every fighter's goal right yes I, I get every fighter's wants to make as much money as possible but surely by fighting the best guys that's where you're going to make the most amount of money this is why I said um, with Jamal Charlo when I made that video about Jamal Charlo is that he must be getting paid a shed load of money you know fighting the guys that he's fighting where maybe a fight with Andre he's thinking I'm not going to get much more fighting Andre, and it's a riskier fight. Why not just carry on doing what I'm doing and make a lot of money now? I'm of the belief that I don't think Demetrius Andre would want, would duck, um, would duck Demetrius, uh, Jamal Charlo not, would not duck Andre. I believe Jamal Charlo is a, is a fighter at heart and he'd fight anybody. Uh, and there's, I don't think there's actually anything in Andre which is to be fearful of. He's not a big puncher. He's a guy that can outclass you. But at the end of the day, I feel like it'll be a big fight, unification fight between two undefeated guys. Golovkin is also somebody that's been accused of being avoiding um, Demetrius Andrade. Golovkin's at the stage of his career where Golovkin now is looking for the biggest paydays. Golovkin always had an ambition early on that he wanted to collect all the belts. Even when, you know, when it was about Canelo, of course he wanted to fight Canelo. But I don't know if you remember Golovkin saying, give me my belt, give me my belt. Because Golovkin wanted to, uh, would have wanted to win all, all, over the, all the belts. However, now, I don't know whether Golovkin has that same ambition anymore. I don't know whether Golovkin's interested in winning belts anymore. I'm not sure whether Golovkin's... I know we, here's the thing. You've got to give him credit because he's 39 and he's going to fight... Well, there's reports that he's going to be fighting Ryoto Morata next. So he's going to be unifying the division. But I think that has come because there's a lot of financial gain from that fight. And he probably looks at it as a low-risk fight where he thinks that he'll beat Ryoto Morata. And it's a, it's a very, very rewarding fight financially. You know, I think he's going to probably... I think, is he going to fight him in Japan? Uh, I know they were going to put up some serious money. So whatever, but I think there's a big, that fight is a big fight for Golovkin financially. And I think that's where Golovkin's at right now. I think Golovkin wants to make as much money as possible. 
uh, before he calls it a day. I don't know whether his ambition now is to become undisputed middleweight champion. I don't think it is. I think it once was. And I think he once had that goal and ambition. Uh, I'm not sure that that goal and ambition is still there for Gennady Golovkin. So, is he really interested in an Andrade fight? I don't think so. Just because I think he'll be probably looking for uh, like a Canelo fight before he retires. And Golov and Andre doesn't really do much for him, to be honest. So you can't you you could look at it that Golovkin's avoiding. I, I, again, Golovkin's achieved a lot and he's a great fighter. I think Golovkin now looking for Canelo, but I would like to see Golovkin fight Andre, and I would actually pick Golovkin to beat Andre. I would actually be, I actually think Golovkin would beat Andre. I know a lot of people, you know, my friend Christian, uh, who, who doesn't see think so. I believe so. I believe Golovkin would beat Andre. Even at this point, I think Golovkin would be too strong. Uh, I think he punches very hard. I think the pressure of Golovkin, if Liam Williams was able to do that, then I believe you, me, Golovkin can do that. Uh, Golovkin hits very hard as well, so one punch could really end the night. Uh, Golovkin's a massive puncher as well, so yeah, I don't think Golov, I don't think Andre is going to be able to get out of the way, especially late on in that fight. I think Golovkin will chin him. To be honest with you, somewhere I think I think it will wear him down. Even if Gol Andre is able to take his power, you know Golovkin will wear Andre down, and for me, take him out down the stretch. That's what I believe. I generally believe that. Um, I generally believe that Golovkin would take Andre out. Um, I know there will be a lot of people that disagree with that and think Golovkin's too old. I don't think so. I think Golovkin still he still got enough in the tank to give uh, Andre help. Uh, I think Golovkin's style is a problem for Andre, for Billy Joe, all these guys that are slick fighters like that. Andre has a, Andre has a style because you can't, they can't hurt him. They can't hurt Golovkin, so they're gonna have to box. A, they're gonna have to walk a tightrope for twelve rounds. They're gonna have to box like that for twelve rounds because they're not gonna hurt Golovkin. You're not gonna hurt him. You're not gonna be able to knock him out. So you're gonna have to really you're gonna you're gonna have to look to outbox him, outclass him for twelve rounds. That's a very difficult, very, very difficult fight to fight. When you when you when the other guy's not care he doesn't care about your power, he's just walking forward. And a, a Golovkin's aggression and the way he cuts off the ring, he cuts it off very aggressively. Uh, he doesn't give you any breathing space, he puts a lot of mental pressure on you. It's not just physical pressure, you know, the power when he's hitting your arms and, you know, when he's hitting you in the body. It's not just that, it's the mental pressure, the fact that you can't keep him off him and he's always on top of you. That must be so demoralizing and must be so energy sapping when you see a guy like Golovkin and you know how hard he punches right on top of you constantly. That's, that's going to tire you, not just physically, but mentally. You know, that's going to get to you. And I believe and I believe Golovkin, that's what he would do to Andre. Yeah, Andre, I believe, would start well, first two or three rounds. But when, when, and when Golovkin starts putting pressure on, keeps coming, keeps coming, Andre is going to start wilting. He's going to start slowing down, just like he did with Liam Williams. He's going to start slowing down. Golovkin's going to keep chipping away, keep chipping away. And if he doesn't get nailed with a big punch, I believe that the constant pressure of Golovkin is going to wear Andre down. And that's why I think Golovkin would be, still beat Andre. That's why I would like to see the fight. But I do feel sorry for Andre. Because I, I do want to see Andre in a, in a big fight. And I don't think it's a fault of him. Because I do think Andre wants to fight everybody. Let's not forget. See, a lot of people, a lot of people, right, don't remember or forget this. That Andre was going to fight Billy Joe. That fight got cancelled to no fault of Andre. Right? Andre, that was going to be his, that was going to be his come out party. You know, if he could beat Billy Joe. And to be honest with you, I, I would have favoured him to beat Billy Joe. I think he's longer. I think he I think he's I think he's slick like Billy Joe. I think he's more spiteful than Billy Joe. Um I and I think he's got a lot of physical advantage over Billy Joe. He's taller, he's got the range of a bit like I, I believe he would have beaten Billy Joe. Because I I don't think Billy Joe would have had power to hurt Andre. I, would Andre have power to hurt Billy Joe? Probably not, but I believe Andre probably would have been quicker, faster. He puts more co his comb he puts better combinations together. Billy Joe's more of a single punch guy, you know. Whereas Andre puts his punches together very well, you know. And um, so I think that would have been a fight where I think Andre would have taken on points. It would have been because I don't believe uh, Billy Joe's slicker than Andre. So that would have been a great fight though. That would have been his come out party, and whoever won that fight, for me, would have had. 
a great claim to fight the top guys and they would have had a great win they would have fought one of the top guys but andre that's not that again that fight was cancelled no fault of andre let's get that out there you know andre wasn't the one that failed the test so did that fight was called off not because of andre so uh, again andre was gonna fight billy joe and andre has been calling to fight golovkin he's been calling to fight canelo he, he's wanting to fight everybody but he's not he's not He's not getting those fights. So like I said, it's no fault of his own. You know, if it was Andre's fault, where he's not getting these big fights and he's he's trying to price himself out of the fight or he's, you know, he's not getting these opportunities due to himself, I can understand. But I don't think it is his himself. I think it I think it's gotten I, I don't I think he wants those big fights. You ha you have to be critical because a guy that's for at the high level as long as Andre have to not really have fought anybody of note you know you can even argue has he even fought a world class fighter you could make an argument that he's not even fought a world class fighter uh, Demetrius Andre and in 12 years surely you know there'd be someone out there that'd be willing to fight him I know a lot of people say well he ducked this he ducked that it's a, the fact is that you have to be critical of somebody that, that's been out the top for maybe a decade now you know, fighting out, being a world class fighter and not being able to secure a world a world class fight. You have to be critical because you're thinking to yourself, all right, yeah, he did secure it against Billy Joe, but that's one fight. There's so many other fighters that, you know, he could have fought. But unfortunately he just couldn't secure the fight. And and like I said, he's 33, 34 years of age. He's getting old, man. He's getting old. He, he, there's gonna come a point where he's gonna slide. And he's gonna meet he's gonna eventually someone's gonna step up and fight him. And it may not be the best Demetrius Andrade, and he may end up getting destroyed. And then people will say, well, oh, he was never that good. He was a hype job. He never fought anybody. He finally fought somebody and he got beat. Andrade might find himself in that position if he doesn't get a move on. Because there's a great possibility that he's going to come across somebody that's young, fresh, hungry, that's going to want to fight him. And Andrade might have seen better days. So, Andre needs to get a move on. You know, whoever is management, Eddie Hearn, whoever, they, he needs to, needs to get a move on. He needs to start putting a lot of pressure because at the end of the day, I, I, you know, he's getting old. He's getting old and, you know, eventually he's going to start sliding. You know, he's 33. You know, it's a very difficult sport, boxing. If you don't get the big fights, eventually... You're gonna, your career's going to start nosediving. And Andre's getting to that point of his career where fighters start to diminish. They don't get better after 33. Very rarely fighters get better after 33. Majority, if you look at the history of the sport of boxing, majority of the fighters start to diminish after 33. You're starting to get to that age where, you know, you're starting to get old, especially in boxing terms. So Andre needs to get a move on. Andre needs to get a move on. He needs to start securing these big fights. And listen, it may be no fault of his own, but at the end of the day, it's his career. You know, so I don't know. Does he move up to 168? Does he fight at Benavidez? Does he go up to 17? I don't know. You know, we were having discussions about what he needs to do. I don't know. Because at 160, it doesn't seem like he can secure a fight. So maybe he needs to fight somebody like a David Benavidez. At 168, somebody that, where he's also in the same position as Andre. He's seen as a world-class fighter, but he's also in the same position as Andre. Because, let's be honest, if Andre was to beat David Benavidez, that would really up his stock. Now, my friend Christian said that he feels he could beat Baterbiev. So, maybe that's something that Andre could consider if he can't get a fight in the future. I, I think that would be a crazy move and I don't think he would have any chance against Baterbiev. But again, there's been fighters in the past that have dared to be great, moved up two weight classes before. So could Andre do it? I would probably say Andre pro should probably move up and test the waters. Maybe fight someone like Joe Smith, who's not as good as Baterbiev. You know, who knows? I, I don't know. But it's the fact is that 168, Canelo and Plant are going to fight, right? So those, Canelo may vacate the belts and go up to 178, sorry, 175. And that become, the belts become vacant. That might leave an opportunity for someone like Demetrius Andrade. 
to go and fight for titles at 168. Who knows how it's all going to play out once if Canelo was to beat Plan. Who knows how it plays out. But leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is Demetrius Andrade being avoided or being ducked by Jamal Charlo and um, Gennady Golovkin? Leave your thoughts. Let me know what you think, guys. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.